Hello, and welcome to our Bible study lesson for the week of September 22nd, 2024. I'm your host, Minister Marshall Bell. I greet you in the immaculate, exalted, and almighty holy name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Let us pray. Dear Master, first I'd like to lift you up and praise your holy name, because you're worthy to be praised. Thank you, dear Master, for choosing me to speak on your behalf, to tell your people of your grace, your goodness, and your mercy. Bless each home that's going to be represented here, one by one and collectively. Bless those people in the pardon of their sins that don't know you, Lord. Help me to say something on your behalf that will convince them that they need to be saved by you. These and all the blessings I ask in our loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This week, I'm going to talk to you about the Lord will get in the fire with you. Say that again. The Lord will get in the fire with you. Um, I talked about this once before a couple of years ago, but the uh, Lord led me back here, and so we need to talk about it again. This is what he wants me to talk about. So we're going to be looking at Daniel 3, 19 through 25. That read says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain, certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to blind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their tor uh, torso, uh, their trousers, their turbans, and their garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fire, fiery furnace. <laughs> Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now before I talk about the scriptures I just read, how did these three men reach this point? The word of God speaks of King Nebuchadnezzar having a gold statue made, which was 90 feet tall and nine feet wide. He then sent out messengers to the princes, prefects, governors, advisors, counselors, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue. Once they had all right, the king told all of the people that when they heard the instruments playing, making a joyful noise, he having a good time, Everyone had to bow down and worship this statue. They were also told that if anyone refused to bow down, they would be immediately, not, not later on, immediately thrown into a blazing furnace. So when the music was played, everyone bowed down as they were told except for three Jewish young men. This statement 
brings up the question of why were there only three? Because there was a large population of Jews in Babylon at that time. And all of them were supposed to serve and worship the one true God, Yahweh. The people then were just like a lot of supposed to be Christians are today. Instead of them holding on to the mighty hand of the Lord, when problems and troubles arise, they turn away from God and try to find other means to solve their situation. They bow down to what they should not and make the situation even worse than it was. But when some of the astrologers saw that these three men did not bow as everyone else had, they went to the king and told him, three men did not bow. Three Jews named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who do not serve your gods or worship your golden idol. Three men are defying your orders, O oh king, king, king Nebuchadnezzar. Three of them defying your orders and serving their God anyway. So what are you going to do about this? Because they are putting their God above your God. They are making you look stupid, king, by saying that their God is better than your, your God. But my Bible tells me over in Exodus 20, 1 through 4, it reads as, And God said, God spoke all these words, saying, Now, this is an absolute law with all encompassing principles and allows for no exception. The Lord Jesus confirms this law timeless application. Exodus 2, 20 and 2 says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Hmm. Somebody forgot, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Here God proclaims trumpets for his people. Triumphant. Here God proclaims triumphant for his people. Not over his people. I am the Lord your God. Identifies the speaker with the one who performed the miracle of the Exodus event. Exodus 23 tells us, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Meaning God. God's character demands loyalty. The believer demonstrates loyalty by worshiping the only one true God. Exodus 20 and 4 says, Thou shalt not make for yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the water under the earth. Israel had been surrounded by people who worship images also called gods. Since no human efforts could represent gods adequately, God forbade creating any image of him, either literally or conceptually. The Israelites, in this regard, became unique among the among their neighbors. Today we are surrounded by so many distractions that many will worship instead of the Lord. Some will worship every militaris, mir, <laughs> every militaristic now I got the word out possession that the Lord has blessed them with to the people that love instead of givers of the blessing. They, they, they worship everything, from their wives to cars to homes, or you name it, everything, except for the one who gave them the blessing. 
But for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this was totally unacceptable. They were not going to bow down to any image or person except for God himself. Let me check my time right quick. See how we're doing. Okay. This made King Nebuchadnezzar fly into a rage. And he ordered all three of them to be brought before him. He gave them one last chance to bow down under the threat of throwing them into a blazing furnace. But under any circumstances, they would not. They would not bow down. They couldn't come up with some reason for them to bow down to that hour. They told him, it does not make any difference what you do. If you throw us in the furnace, the God whom we serve can save us. That's some faith. That's some faith. Can any of you say this saying? When Satan throws you under the bus, can any of you get back up after he has knocked you down? Because you should understand that every knockdown is not a knockout. Just as long as you hold on to the mighty hands of the Son of God. Can you tell Satan what these three young men told Nebuchadnezzar? We do not need to define ourselves before you. If you throw us under the bus, if you give us all types of troubles and problems, if you throw us in the blazing hot furnace, my God and your God, our God, Jesus Christ, the God that we serve is able at all times to save us. I don't care what come up. He can do whatever and never fail. Never. You see, these three men provided the model for a faithful testimony under the threat of torture and death. Although relatively few believers are required to face the ultimate test that these Hebrew men face, those who do are constantly given the highest honor in heavenly roles. We as Lord, as the Lord's disciples have got to be, got to believe that God is able to deliver us from the most difficult circumstances. We must be willing to endure death rather than deny our faith in our God's power to believe to deliver us this brings us to our verses for this lesson beginning with Daniel 3 19 which reads as I'm gonna read those verses again beginning with 19 and that says then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and the expression on his face changed towards Sacrach, Meshach and Abednego he spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He wanted hot. It's got to get hot because he, he upset with these guys, these, these three men. Defying him, he really upset. We all need to understand that whenever we don't allow what Satan throws our way to affect our faith in the Lord. It makes him a little hot under the collars, so to speak. He gets upset. He will turn up the heat on us. <clears throat> make it hotter. He might make you sicker than you have ever been. Come up with a way to take your home from you that you have been paying on for years. And never missed a payment. I have no idea what Satan would try to do in your life. But I do know for sure that he has a plan for your destruction. As I say all the time, 
His only objective in life is to kill our happiness, steal our joy, and destroy our relationship with our God. But we can tell old Satan what Romans 5, 1 through 5 says. That reads as, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in the tribulation, knowing that the tribulation produces pr preservation and preservation character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. That's some good message right there. Knowing that God, that Jesus can do all this for you. We can do all this as long as we first believe what Hebrews 11 and 1 says. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Moving on to Daniel 3, 20, 21. 21, 21, I mean 20 and 21 says, And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their clothes, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. <laughs> Satan will use whoever allows him whoever that allowed them to use them, to try and get us to believe they have our best interests and they are doing what we need in our lives. If you listen to them long enough, they could have you believing that a barnyard chicken is actually a soaring eagle. But we have to stand our ground in our faith in Jesus. Just as the mighty men of valor bound these three Hebrews, Satan will bind you in self-pity and doubt in Christ. Right now our country is in this political season and is totally divided. Just as divided as it was during the Civil War. Divided to the point of trying to kill the leaders of our country, which should never happen. Whether we like one party or the other. The Lord tells us himself in Matthew 12, 25b. Every king divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. I want my country to stand. So we need to get this right. Back to these Hebrew boys. But these young Hebrews men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments. Dressed up. Dressed up ready for slaughter. Made to look good to everyone else before Satan brought them down to where God did not want them to be. Hmm. That's what he tried to do to you. Try to bring you down to where God don't want you. You don't have to go that way though. You don't have to do that. But he tried. He's going to try it. At least that we are going to look good before they die. These men are going to look good before they die. He's going to make you look good too. You don't have to do that though. You got an advocate. You got a way out. You got somebody to stand up for you. But my Bible tells me. He who is in you 
is greater than he who is in the world. That's First John 4 and 4. The Christian believer, by having the Holy Spirit with him, within him, has powers over all demons. When Jesus Christ sent his apostles out on their mission, he said he was giving them authority over all the powers of their enemies. That's Luke 10, 19. Jesus' authority is greater than Satan's power. When the disciples said, Lord, even the demons, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus replied, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. My name up there. That's Luke 10, 17, and 20. The Christian believer has unlimited authority over demons in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I use it all the time. Satan start bothering me. I'll tell him quick, get behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. But you got to put that Jesus on the internet. He ain't going nowhere on your name. But that authority is nothing compared to the glory and the authority we will know in heaven. Please allow me to move on to verse 22. Let me check my time one more time. No, we all right. Daniel uh, 3.22 That reads says, <clears throat> Therefore, because king command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 1 Samuel 17.47 tells us, then all these assembly halls know that the Lord does not save with sword spears. He doesn't, doesn't have to. He doesn't need any, any weaponry to fight your battle. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. You see, the fire was too hot. For the men who were trying to turn up the heat on Shack, Rack, Meshack, and Abednego. Remember, it's seven times hotter than it's ever been. The fire was so hot that it caught him and uh, caught hold of them as they threw them in. They got burned up. The fire burned them up as they were throwing them in there. They, they strong men, mighty men of valor, army men. <laughs> but you need to understand this for yourself. If you are a child of the king, whenever someone tries to step on your character, whenever they try to destroy your good name or your uh, or mip, uh, manipulate others in the thinking of you in the wrong way, whenever si Satan tries to turn up the heat on you, all you need to do is to keep on holding on to the Lord. And everyone will find out what my God can do. Hold on to him. I don't care what happened. Hold on to him. My mother used to tell me while I was growing up that whenever you dig a ditch for someone else, you need to dig a ditch for yourself. Because whatever a person tries to do to another, the very same fate may befall them also. Once you have learned this, you will know for sure that you can never lose with the stuff that my God uses. Hmm. He don't ever fail. He take care of your lightweight. You think it's heavyweight, <laughs> that's lightweight for him. He made everything. He take care of you. Made you and everything else. Nothing, nothing too hard for him. Nothing too hard for him to fix. You just got to let him do it. Moving on to Daniel 3.23. That says, And these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of, of the burning fiery furnace. 
at times the fires that Satan puts us through. We may need to fall down on our knees, even though we may be bound in the very midst of our fire, so that we can look up. Psalms 1, 21, 1 and 2 tells us, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We also need to remember when others are lying on us. What Psalms 120 and 2 says, Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. Hmm. You have got to believe whatever may be going wrong with your life. The Lord will come to your rescue. He gonna be there. In Matthew 28 and 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And the Lord might not come when you want him to. He, 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 he might seem like he's coming a little late. He not seem like he might not make it on time. But my God is never late. He's always on time. He's an on-time God. He comes to your need when you need him. <laughs> Just because you crying out and saying you need him, you might not need him right then. But, but when you do need him, he going to show up. So my God can most definitely handle any type of fire that Satan may try to put in your life. Whatever it may be. Whatever the fire is. I don't care how bad the situation is. He can handle it. He can got it. He's got your back. He can take care of it. Moving on to uh, Daniel 3, 24. That says, The king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Now the king was amazed. And what he was seeing and totally astonished. He was so perplexed that he had to stand up in haste because he could not believe what he was seeing with his own eyes. He knew that he had three men. He had put three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He threw them three men into the fire. But what he was looking at could not be true. <laughs> it was at this point that he even had to ask one of his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? In case he was seeing something that no one else was could see. Nobody else could see what was going on, so he had to ask somebody else. But everyone who was anywhere near that hot furnace could see that there was something special going on in the midst of the fire. You see, that fire had no power because that fire was not burning the hair off the heads, off the heads. That fire had no power because their garments were not being burned. That fire had no power because they would not even smell as if they had been anywhere near fire. But verse 25 helps us, helps us to understand what happened between Nebuchadnezzar. Why he said this, why Nebuchadnezzar said what he said. Verse 25 says, Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. <laughs> I like that part. I like that part, the Son of God. Whenever the Son of God, Jesus Christ, gets in involved in the middle of your troubles, whenever he gets in Involved in the middle of your problems. Whenever he gets involved in the middle of your fire. My God has prepared a solution for all your mess. 
I read read this scripture in our last lesson, but the Lord is requiring me to read it again, Matthew nineteen twenty six. But Jesus looked at them and said, "With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible." But on the other hand. On the other hand, there's another hand to this thing. Unless we have the same faith in God that these three Hebrews had. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us, but without faith, do you understand me? Let me say that again. Without faith, that means no faith at all. Without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please my God. For he comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him i tried to say it slow i want to let me say that again but without faith it is impossible to please him for he comes to god he for he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. You got to have faith. You got to have that mustard seed faith and, and nothing else. You got to have more. I mean, mustard seed to get you get something for you. But you, you know, after you've been around God for a while, you, your faith ought to grow. Nothing pleases God as a steadfast faith in all that He is and promises to do. You got to understand that. You got to have some faith in my God. In conclusion, faith believes what God says and acts in line with his word. Faith allows the believer to enter the rest into which God has called all his people. It acknowledges the complete word of work of salvation while faithfully obeying every institution from God. Devotion is concentration on particular pursuits, purposes, or cause. He who is devoted to Jesus recognizes his fleshly tendencies to become lackluster though, and studies to avoid it. The scriptures shapes his thinking and he devotes time to prayer to waiting upon the Lord and the praise and thanksgiving. We need to seize God's diligently. Believe that he will reward you for it. I do. And what and why do I do it? I do. And why do I do? It is because I know for sure that my God went to a kangaroo court, didn't say a mumbling word. I know my master went in there and didn't say nothing because he'd already told them everything about what they were asking him about. He already, they'd already seen him everywhere, so they know he knew that uh, he already told them. He didn't need to say it again. But they took my master out back, beat him. They whipped him. They kicked him. They spit on him. They pulled the hairs out of his beard, on his chin. Then they put a crown of thorns on my master. But that wasn't enough. I put my master, a cross on my master's back. Marched him up a hill, called Delgado. Cross was heavy, but it was not heavy just because he was getting a cross. It was a heavy piece of wood, but it was heavier because he had the sins of the world on his back. My sins, your sins, every other sin come past, present, and future. When he got to the top of that the hill, got to the top of Delgado Hill. He laid that cross down. They did not force my master over there on that cross. He got on it himself. Got on that cross, stretched his arms out wide, allowed him to put nails in his hands, allowed him to put nails in his feet. They messed up though when they raised my master up. Cause he told him, I'm gonna do some drawing. He drew me. Please allow him to draw you. He hung there and died. They took my master down, put him in a bar tomb. He only needed three days. He needed long. Some people say well, one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I, I know that's a joke, but he only stayed in it three days. Cause on that third day, 
on that first getting up resurrection Sunday morning, that Easter Sunday morning, that first one, my master walked out of that grave with all power in his holy hands, raised him to the sky and said, I got all power, not some of it, all power. He was the one who was walking around in the furnace with the three evil roars. Like he uh, never could even say it. I saw the Son of God. He did. People are always trying to figure out if that was really Jesus, the angel. No, he saw the Lord. He'd been here all the time. He'd been here from the beginning. He created the world. He made it. Nothing was made without him. And, and all through the Bible, they to call him the angel of the Lord. He's in the Bible from the beginning to the end. The whole thing is about him. The whole Bible. If you've been listening to me, you want to change your life. You want to get it together for yourself. Don't want to die and go to hell. Pray with me right now. Dear Master, I'm a sinner. Listen to that preach. I heard the word that he said. I want to change my life. Dear Master, put someone in these people's lives that can lead them in the right way to go next. Thank you, Lord, for choosing me to speak on your behalf. I have, uh, thank you for doing everything you have done for me. These are all the blessings I ask in our loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. I am Minister Marshall Bell, Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church, where I am one of the ministers there. It's four of the ministers. I make five, and the pastor makes six. But each one is to preach you the word of God. We're going to tell you what God said. <laughs> you know, whether you like it or not, I don't care. But I'm going to tell you what he tell me to say. Uh... I have no idea what he wants me to talk about next week, but I will be here ready, willing, and able to say whatever he tells me to say. And I'll be glad to do it. <laughs> but uh, until then, I will. Uh, oh, let me say this too. Uh, I would like you to come by and visit us on YouTube. And you can see us uh, live on Sunday mornings. Uh, uh, you can listen to it later on, just like you can hear this at any time. But like I was about to say, until next week, I will tell you bye-bye.